how I started off is with my GameStar um, TV introductions I like to use um, these metal textures which I found on the internet and haven't really properly, properly given due credit to. So um, actually I might just make a new composition and try to try to make it along the way. So you got all that. Okay, cool. So I have the metal texture image. You can either, you can either drag it onto the um, workspace like that or you could drag it onto your timeline like so. I'm not using that one. I want the dark metal texture. That is what it is. So it's 1280 by 720. That's your workspace right there. So your resolution for your video. Um, this image is quite a big. Um, it's actually like 3000 by something. So I need to rescale it. And you can do this in either two ways. You can see this purple line here is actually the full size of the image. You could grab the edge of the image, drag it in, hold shift so that it keeps its ratio and you got and you can drag it down like that and you have it simplified like I mean shrunken down like so. Otherwise control uh, Z to undo. If you were to press S on your keyboard and there are a lot of shortcuts uh, to you know change all the variables of your layer. Um, I'll try to go through the, the main basic ones that I use all the time. So S is scale and you got 100 by 100, uh, this one being X and this one being the Y axis. You can just drag it down like so uh, and um, yeah you can just set the value like so and happy with 45 like that. And uh, so that's our base, uh, our base for our, um, or our canvas for our video to start off with. And uh, I've also got my audio, which I'm going to chuck down there. It's also 30 seconds. And uh, in regards to audio, in Adobe After Effects, don't use MP3s. Only use WAV files or any other uncompressed files, but just mainly work with WAV. If anything, if you have an MP3, you can chuck it into a free program called Audacity or Sony Vegas even, and you can render it out uh, as a WAV and use it like so. And so that is our wave. Um, audio is a bit harder to use in Adobe After Effects because um, uh, I can't explain why, but it's just not as easy as to use as it is in Sony Vegas for me. But um, what I learned perhaps just 20 minutes ago is that yes, you can do all that stuff um, that I did at the beginning of. Um, Sony Vegas where you, you play and then you, you do go through the markers and so you don't press play because play actually when you press play it, it renders the um, audio with the, um, the visual or the video and that can be very slow it's called a RAM preview and uh, it, you never really hear the audio that smoothly if you want to hear the audio there are a few ways to do it um, if you press um, your period key, so full stop, um, it starts up and uh, while the music is playing, if you press the asterisk, the star button, um, it's creating markers like the race, press the one, two, three, four, and stop, you press period again. You can see um, these markers come up like so, and yeah, it's just... Apparently it's a couple of frames off by music, but um, for the most part, this is the way you can get markers in your audio. So it's, that's a good way to do that. So we got our audio base. Um, you can open up each layer into its properties by clicking on these triangles. So with the wave, you could open up the audio, open up the waveform, and you can actually see the, the whole wave like you would in Sony Vegas. Or you could just press L, L. So the shortcut to get to audio is you press L once, and then you press L again, and yeah. So back to the actual visual. What we start off with is you got the black or the dark texture background. I have a a warning, a um, a warning for M15 course language, and that comprises of three separate images. 
that comprises of the game start image which I'm dragging on top so if it's above you know it's actually remember to make sure where it lies on the layers so if it's below you know this layer the other layer is actually going to be on top of it so you can see it so it's on top that's one um, I'm gonna resize this a bit so S like so it's a good size um, we got um, a couple of text um, a couple of special effects text that I had so it's course language that I did in Photoshop uh, you could you could do this in uh, After Effects but since I was making this image in uh, Photoshop I was made it anyway so you got may contain course language like so shrinking if you if you press um, so if you have a few images and you want to sh you know shrink them by the same value by the same time you can shift and click and get two layers or you could just press control and you can pick another layer and so if you have the two layers press s scale shrink it down a bit you got that um, and the animation that I made for this is a type of flying in animation like so so um, there are a number of ways that you can do this um, I'll just do a simple way so what happens with the GameStar logo is that it flies in or it actually it's actually really really magnified and actually is, zooms out and then the um, text comes up um, by changing its opacity so in the two seconds that happens so how that works is with scale this a lot of Adobe After Effects has got to do with keys you know keying like I explained in Sony Vegas and like I said in smoothing it's making specific points and then you know making two points and then adjusting the variables in between and you know that's how you make animation type effects so um, in this case I'm going to be changing the scale of the um, GameStar logo. So I, I like where the logo, I like where he is right now, I like his scale. So um, when it's zooming in, it's going to stop at around two seconds. And so I'm going to I'm going to click on this stopwatch next to scale, and that makes a keyframe right here, this diamond. And so at two seconds it's going to be at this 42 percent scale so I could have it so at, at zero seconds if I increase it up really big and you could you just click and drag it up and if you hold shift it actually drags it up by a massive margin or massive you know, massive massive proportions it's now at 3000 percentage uh, magnification or scale so it's actually out of this entire screen you can see how big it is now it's just a really cheap way of doing this type of effect so if at zero seconds it's that much zoomed and at two seconds it is what it used to be originally in between it's going to go from 2000 to 40 and so if I zoom you can see this value actually change so 2000 uh, 3000 to 2000 to 1000 to 100 to 40 and it stops there and that's how I made that animation all at the same time um, you can adjust these keyframes around at, at the time when it was zooming in uh, I had the course language and the uh, may contain images appear so I wanted to I wanted to change the opacity so to change the opacity you press T for opacity which is the second last letter in the word opacity it's not that you know doesn't make much sense but yeah is that 100% so I want that to when it hits the background I want both of them to show up and I just want just before when it appears on the screen I want both of them to be at zero and so in between this point you can you can zoom in on this specific area by either doing two things you got a scale down here that you could click up or drag up and down like that or you can manually use this bar up here to drag it in 
and uh, yeah, it's it's all just a lot of trial and error. The very basic things can, you know, you don't feel stupid if you don't know certain, you know, shortcuts and all that. Like the very basic things, like you think, yeah, sure, why can't I do this? It's very simple. Like it took me a few months to realize you can move around your workspace by holding space and and, and dragging it around. It took me a few months before I knew how to do that. Very annoying. Especially when you're zoomed in and you want to drag it around. So hold space, mouse one, zoom around. Scroll out just to zoom out. So in our first two seconds we have um, zoom in uh, and opacity come up, bam. That's our first two seconds. Fantastic. What happens next is that it all disappears at around four seconds. So very simple. You got all three of them, press T twice, comes up with opacity and uh, yeah, you want the opacity to stay, I want, I want both of it to stay at 100 for like a second or so. So if you make a keyframe here for the game star, if you press this triangle down here, it creates keyframes for the other two which you've already created keyframes for move forward to three seconds or four seconds then make it go down to zero and so zooms in flies in stays at a hundred and then zooms out might want to keep these at a hundred for a bit longer let people read it so like that then it fades out now it comes to the part where I have my medic come in and so this is the green screen medics in which I recorded um, before in my um, green screening tutorial. So if I chuck medic red in a layer like that, I recorded it at quite a big scale. So I'm just going to um, resize it there. That's good. We have um, our key lighting. Um, or chroma keying plugin, so you can either search search through that, or I can just go through effects. Type in key light. You can drag the effect onto the screen. I like to drag the effect onto the layer so I know what exactly I'm applying it to. Then key light comes up. Um, you can choose what color you want to screen or to screen out. So you pick the eyedropper tool, and you get rid of the green, and it's all gone. And like I mentioned a bit before, there's a little bit of res residue green, and that's what they did in this uh, pre-multiplying result. So untick that, and it should be gone. It's it's kind of a compromising effect for not perfect green screening, but in this case it is perfect green screening, so I'm happy with that. Now, if we drag our timeline out a bit more, you see I have this clip that. You know, it's it's the medic flying in like so, or, or zooming up on him like so, and then it's actually two clips in one, which he actually uh, does both of that, and um, just drag that forward a bit like so, and uh, yeah, at four seconds he starts to move in like that, and uh, you got the logo there, then you got him moving across like so, that looks kind of cool, but I wanted it wasn't as smooth so and I'll, I'll you know for some reason I decided I don't like it zooming down from feet to face I liked it going from head to, to feet so, and then uh, I wanted a bit of a blur effect like so and I wanted both of these to start I wanted both um, both of them to overlap each other so I had to split this footage into two so you can duplicate this layer by going uh, you can copy or paste you can just press copy you know, control C control V you go to layer and uh, you can go duplicate somewhere uh, edit duplicate which is control D and another layer comes up so 